Hey guys, today we're going to be going over the SAV 2012-8, wait, or maybe the SAV 2012-48. That doesn't make sense. How are you supposed to pronounce this thing? I've, this is like the second time I've tried to like do an intro for it, but I just don't know how to pronounce it. But anyways, enough with the yapping. Yeah, there's not much information on this thing. It was a post-war Swedish prototype that had a 120mm gun that was auto-loaded and at least in War Thunder had a 1.8 second reload. So it's like, it has some pretty good firepower to say the least. But looking on Google and all that, really the only information there is on it is War Thunder related because War Thunder is the only really the only thing that makes it relevant so that's what I'm going to be getting my information off of so if any of this is wrong and if anyone has decent sources I will redo the video and if someone brings up something better than War Thunder sources so anyways according to War Thunder this was a private venture by Bofors to design a next generation assault gun for both purposes what for both export purposes and indigenous use following world war ii the main goal was to make a light maneuverable armored 120 millimeter auto cannon capable of dealing with both soft targets like a bunker or a machine gun nest or something like that and tanks the prototype was built during the late 1940s the war thunder wiki doesn't specify at all but no one was willing to buy it because it was expensive seeing all of the technology with auto cannon and all that not auto, it's not i guess it's not auto cannon it's more auto loaded but yeah no one bought it so really it's high price and technology was the reason that it failed one interesting thing i found is a guy on devnart said that some of the technology that was used in the sav 2012 yeah <laughs> um it was used in the strv 103 which is the little evil cheese wedge thing that can angle itself and all that but you know what else it has an auto loaded 105 millimeter gun i'm pretty sure it's l7 if that's the right word i'll put it up on screen if I'm i said a bad word just now but i will put it up on screen i'm trying to be family friendly guys but anyways, yeah, the STRV got some technology, allegedly. He had no sources, but there's not much sources <laughs> to go off of. So, yeah, it's been a yap sesh so far, not going to lie. One benefit that the SAV has over some of Sweden's other less good medium tanks and light tanks and... A guns and stuff is it's has it has no armor that's pretty much it and it's fairly light so it has good mobility as you can see and another thing that it has compared to like say a Sherman which a lot of countries had from surplus from America around the post-war time is it has a very low silhouette it could just like be sitting in a tree line and it would genuinely be hard to see Compared to Sherman, where it's like, I'll, I'll put it up on screen how tall it is, but compared to this thing, it's just massive. I think earlier in the video, in the footage, you could see like a Sherman driving by me, and it's like double the height. And that pretty much wraps stuff up. There wasn't any service history to this. No country's ever purchased it. And really, it went nowhere other than the evil cheese wedge. But, uh, sorry for there not being any uploads in the last, uh, month, I think. I've really been focusing on school and all that. But I'm going to try and get, uh, shorter videos out. I'll see how that does with algorithm and everything. And if you guys like them, I'll keep them coming. Um, but if you guys don't like them, just leave a comment. I'll go back to <laughs> doing longer videos. But, yeah, I think it's fun doing 
views on obscure tanks like this. But anyways, see you guys. Have a very good day.